Then Eliaphaz the Temanite answered, If one ventures a word with you, will you be offended? Yet who can keep from speaking? Behold, you have instructed many, and you have strengthened the weak hands. Your words have upheld him who was stumbling, and you have made firm the feeble knees. But now it has come to you, and you are impatient. It touches you, and you are dismayed. Is not your fear of God your confidence, and the integrity of your ways your hope? Think now, who that was innocent ever perished, or where were the upright cut off? As I have seen, those who plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of his anger they are consumed. The roar of the lion, the voice of the fierce lion, the teeth of the young lions are broken. The strong lion perishes for lack of prey, and the whelps of the lioness are scattered. Now a word was brought to me stealthily, my ear received the whisper of it, amid thoughts from visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, dread came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. A spirit glided past my face, the hair of my flesh stood up, it stood still, but I could not discern its appearance. A form was before my eyes, there was silence, then I heard a voice, can mortal man be righteous before God? Can a man be pure before his maker? Even in his servants he puts no trust, and his angels he charges with error. How much more those who dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed before the moth. Between morning and evening they are destroyed. They perish forever without any regarding it. If their tent cord is plucked up within them, do they not die, and that without wisdom? Call now, is there anyone who will answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? Surely vexation kills the fool, and jealousy slays the simple. I have seen the fool taking root, but suddenly I cursed his dwelling. His sons are far from safety, they are crushed in the gate, and there is no one to deliver them. His harvest the hungry eat, and he takes it even out of thorns, and the thirsty pant after his wealth. For affliction does not come from the dust, nor does trouble sprout from the ground, but man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. As for me, I would seek God, and to God would I commit my cause, who does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. He gives rain upon the earth and sends waters upon the fields. He sets on high those who are lowly, and those who mourn are lifted to safety. He frustrates the devices of the crafty, so that their hands achieve no success. He takes the wise in their own craftiness, and the schemes of the wily are brought to a quick end. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope at noonday as in the night. But he saves the fatherless from their mouth, the needy from the hand of the mighty. So the poor have hope, and injustice shuts her mouth. Behold, happy is the man whom God reproves, therefore despise not the chastening of the Almighty. For he wounds, but he binds up, he strikes, but his hands heal. He will deliver you from six troubles, in seven there shall no evil touch you. In famine he will redeem you from death, and in war from the power of the sword. You shall be hidden from the scourge of the tongue, and shall not fear destruction when it comes. At destruction and famine you shall laugh, and shall not fear the beasts of the earth. For you shall be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with you. You shall know that your tent is safe, and you shall inspect your fold and miss nothing. You shall know also that your descendants shall be many, and your offspring as the grass of the earth. You shall come to your grave in ripe old age, as a shock of grain comes up to the threshing floor in its season. Behold, this we have searched out, it is true. Hear, and know, it is for your good. Then Job answered, O oh, that my vexation were weighed, and all my calamity laid in the balances, for then it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. Therefore my words have been rash, for the arrows of the Almighty are in me. My spirit drinks their poison, the terrors of God are arrayed against me. Does the wild donkey bray when he has grass, or the ox low over his fodder? Can that which is tasteless be eaten without salt, or is there any taste in the slime of the purslane? My appetite refuses to touch them. They are as food that is loathsome to me. Oh, that I might have my request, and that God would grant my desire, that it would please God to crush me, that he would let loose his hands and cut me off. This would be my consolation. I would even exult in pain unsparing, for I have not denied the words of the Holy One. What is my strength that I should wait? And what is my end that I should be patient? Is my strength the strength of stones, or is my flesh bronze? In truth, 
I have no help in me, and my resource is driven from me. He who withholds kindness from a friend forsakes the fear of the Almighty. My brethren are treacherous as a torrent bed, as freshets that pass away, which are dark with ice, and where the snow hides itself. In time of heat they disappear, when it is hot they vanish from their place. The caravans turn aside from their course, they go up into waste and perish. The caravans of Tima look, the travelers of Sheba hope. They are disappointed because they were confident, they come there and are confounded. Such you have now become to me. You are my calamity and are afraid. Have I said, make me a gift, or from your wealth offer a bribe for me, or deliver me from the adversary's hand, or ransom me from the hand of oppressors? Teach me and I will be silent. Make me understand how I have erred, how forceful are honest words. But what does reproof from you reprove? Do you think that you can reprove words when the speech of a despairing man is wind? You would even cast lots over the fatherless and bargain over your friend. But now be pleased to look at me, for I will not lie to your face. Turn, I beg, let no wrong be done. Turn now, my vindication is at stake. Is there any wrong on my tongue? Cannot my taste discern calamity? Has not a man a hard service upon earth, and are not his days like the days of a hireling? Like a slave who longs for the shadow, and like a hireling who looks for his wages, so I am allotted months of emptiness, and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing till the dawn. My flesh is clothed with worms and dirt. My skin hardens, then breaks out afresh. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and come to their end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never again see good. The eye of him who sees me will behold me no more. While your eyes are upon me, I shall be gone. As the cloud fades and vanishes, so he who goes down to Sheol does not come up. He returns no more to his house, nor does this place know him any more. Therefore, I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I the sea or a sea monster that you set a guard over me? When I say, my bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint, then you scare me with dreams and terrify me with visions, so that I would choose strangling and death rather than my bones. I loathe my life. I would not live forever. Let me alone, for my days are a breath. What is man that you make so much of him, and that you set your mind upon him, visit him every morning, and test him every moment? How long will you not look away from me, nor let me alone till I swallow my spittle? If I sin, what do I do to you, you watcher of men? Why have you made me your mark? Why have I become a burden to you? Why do you not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? For now I shall lie in the earth. You will seek me, but I shall not be. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. When the wicked are in authority, transgression increases, but the righteous will look upon their downfall. Discipline your son, and he will give you rest. He will give delight to your heart. Where there is no prophecy, the people cast off restraint but blessed is he who keeps the law. By mere words, a servant is not disciplined, for though he understands, he will not give heed. Do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. He who pampers his servant from childhood will in the end find him his heir. A man of wrath stirs up strife, and a man given to anger causes much transgression. A man's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. The partner of a thief hates his own life. He hears the curse, but discloses nothing. The fear of man lays a snare, but he who trusts in the Lord is safe. Many seek the favor of a ruler, but from the Lord a man gets justice. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, but he whose way is straight is an abomination to the wicked. I myself am satisfied about you, my brethren, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another. But on some points I have written to you very boldly by way of reminder, because of the grace given me by God, to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to be proud of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has wrought through me to win obedience from the Gentiles by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
so that from Jerusalem and as far round as Elycrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ, thus making it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on another man's foundation, but as it is written, they shall see who have never been told of him, and they shall understand who have never heard of him. This is the reason why I have so often been hindered from coming to you. But now, since I no longer have any room for work in these regions, and since I have longed for many years to come to you, I hope to see you in passing as I go to Spain, and to be sped on my journey there by you, once I have enjoyed your company for a little. At present, however, I am going to Jerusalem with aid for the saints, for Macedonia and Achaia have been pleased to make some contribution for the poor among the saints at Jerusalem. They were pleased to do it, and indeed they are in debt to them, for if the Gentiles have come to share in their spiritual blessings, they ought also to be of service to them in material blessings. When therefore I have completed this, and have delivered to them what has been raised, I shall go on by way of you to Spain, and I know that when I come to you I shall come in the fullness of the blessings of Christ. I appeal to you, brethren, by our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the love of the Spirit, to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf, that I may be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, so that by God's will I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. St. Paul is pleased with the Christian community in Rome. They possess goodness and knowledge, and they instruct one another. But Paul also reminds his audience that he has written to them very boldly by way of reminder. We must not grow complacent in our faith. We should be ready to accept instruction and even reproof from our brethren. Similarly, it is one of the responsibilities of church leaders to encourage us, guide us, and correct our failings, and we should not resist this correction. Even our life's trials, when born with faith and reliance on God, are opportunities to grow in holiness. For God, who does not will our suffering but allows it, seeks always to conform us more perfectly to himself, even though at times this may be painful and unpleasant. Today's readings from both Job and Proverbs show us that our response to trials and strife can strengthen us. Humility and trust in God is the proper response. Do you resent your daily sufferings, or do you accept them as opportunities to grow in holiness?